This is Cauldron's Crypt, Season 1, Episode 4, for November 25th, 2016. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron Script. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, this is a place to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. Today, we're going to take a look at what it is to be a submissive and define the different types of submissives. But first, I want to touch on a couple of things that I missed last week under common mistakes with the dominance role. The first one being extremely common is inconsistencies. Like I said, it's not for the lazy. It's not for the inconsistent. If you set up rules, you define things that are supposed to be done a certain way, then it is your job as a dominant to stick to those and be consistent and true to the rewards or the punishments for those things. And the punishment should always be at the same level as the indiscretion. Same thing with the reward. And it's all part of being consistent. The second thing is follow through. And it kind of goes along those same lines. If you say you're going to do something, I use the example of the baby girl submissive that I am friends with, that I grew up with, that needed the bedtime. If she was late today and her dom punished her and she had a 10 o'clock bedtime tomorrow and she maintained that and then was a couple of days she was late again and he just ignored it, then it's not going to provide the structure that she requires and that is what makes her a submissive. That's why she enjoys that role is because she needs the structure and definition of everyday life. And she needs it to be well maintained, very consistent, and that follow through to always take place. Uh, that takes care of the things that, that I missed. If there's anything else that you can think of, I'm always open to suggestion or conversation. Again, that phone number is 865-268-4005. You can leave your questions, comments, or, as I said, email us at cauldronscrypt at gmail.com or visit the website cauldronscrypt.com. Just as the rules to love by with last week in the dominance role, it's the same for the submissive. The first one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. The second one is the kinky code, knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. And the third comes from that great quote by Paul Young, submission is not about authority and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. And I'm not going to go back into detail. If you're just now joining the show, Please go back to the first episode and start listening from there. This is a series, so there will be some things that I make reference to or touch on that you, you may have missed out on if you do not do that. So straight into the submissive's role. I have talked to several people about this. As I am not a submissive, it is a little bit harder, actually a lot harder to define than the dominance role. And even for submissives, because a lot of them tend to go straight to, well, my role is whatever I'm told to do. And that is really not the case. And that's part of the negotiation. And that's where, to reference Fifty Shades of Grey again, gets it wrong is it goes straight into the play and the abuse without there actually being any negotiation, which is what makes it abuse. 
the first thing that was offered to me was a cheerleader as a role, the greatest supporter of the dominant. And these kind of go both ways. There again, is it's a relationship of love and respect, you have that person there to support you no matter what. The second one is encourager of growth. And in that, challenging you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And that's the one that really brings the dominant the most pleasure. I've had people that have listened to this and asked me, well, if it's so much work, then why would anyone want to do this? Why would anyone want to be a dominant? It sounds like being a submissive is actually so much easier because you talk about you have to put in at least twice as much work as the dominant than the submissive does. And that is really your return is that that growth, the personal growth that you receive, the personal enlightenment that comes from it. And you can see someone else become a better person. And again, that charges you or recharges or energizes you to continue working on yourself and becoming what you really want to be or what you know you should be. The third thing that many conversations came to was a source of strength. And at first, when people would say that, I had to question it, not because of my own experience or my doubting that, but finding out and digging deeper as to what they meant by that, because I was asking submissives, and how are these submissives providing themselves as a source of strength to their dominant? And that comes through the power exchange, because there again, you can see your work pay off, and nothing makes a person stronger than a job well done. I've seen it every day in my life. People completely defeated because their work did not pay off, as opposed to people very proud and standing tall because they had something to show. And I am not a sports person. I played sports growing up. But I've never been the person to really sit and watch a football game or, or basketball game. And a lot of other guys are very puzzled by that because if you see me, I'm not – the smallest of guys, I, I look like somebody who would be big into sports. And I tell them that it's very simple, the reason I don't watch sports, because I have my own accomplishments. I don't need to look to a sports team or to anyone else to find pleasure in the things that I have accomplished, because there is no pleasure in that. If a football team that I like, and I I, I, there is a football team that I like, but there again, don't really watch it. I have an app on my phone that tells me if they win or loss and or win or lose. And if they win, cool, I'm happy for them. If they lose, then obviously, eh, not so much, but it doesn't really bother me. Whereas yeah, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and if UT wins a game, the economy is thriving for the week and you're just waiting for the next game to see what the economy is going to do. Because if they lose, then there could be a dip in the economy. If they repeat their loss, then the economy is going to come back up because people get depressed and they start shopping. It, it's pretty sad to me that people will base their entire self-worth on whether or not their team is winning or losing. And in the DS relationship, that is one of the biggest pushes or re-energizers of your own self-motivation and your pride. And that's where that source of strength comes from. And it's the same thing with growth and having that, that cheerleader there, someone to, to support you and promote you. Because if you enter into the community, not just into a relationship, but actually become friends with other people into BDSM, you become known by your submissive. Every dominant is known solely by their submissive, how they act, how they appear. It is, if, if being a dominant was a business, then they are pretty much your, uh, your front window and everyone will look and you'll become known in the community as either 
someone who is positive and trusted and loyal and knows what they're doing and cares about their submissives, or you'll become known as someone who maybe is abusive or lies or not consistent with with how they treat their submissive, and other submissives will pay close attention to that as well. It's pretty short on the things that, that we could come up with. I mean, there's entire books written on it that go into great detail, more on the actions but this is just a brief introduction, uh, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time diving deep down into exactly all these different things. But getting into the submissive types, that does take a lot of explanation. There are just about as many types of submissives as there are stars in the sky. Because everyone is unique. Now, there are some major groups. Baby girl or baby boy. Brats. Pets. Littles. And then what I typically refer to as the bottom slaves. The bottom of the barrel, just slaves that want to be somewhat less than human. So to get into those, we'll start with the first one. What is a baby girl? There's different types of those. Some are, are princess, some are brats. To define baby girl, you have to get into the mindset of someone who really wants to be held and coddled and treated like a princess, big on cuddling as a reward. In fact, cuddle deprivation is probably one of the biggest punishments that you can discipline a baby girl with. To some, a baby girl is a person that is held in the highest regard as a submissive. They're given special privileges that other submissives aren't given. Say, being a little playful and sarcastic or snarky at times, things of that nature, and you you tend to allow them to get away with a little bit more than you would some other types of submissives. The brats are baby girls that have big attitudes, and they enjoy going off a lot, typically, and fighting to get their way, and it, it takes someone very special to be able to deal with a brat. In fact, I, I know of one person who is considered the brat tamer and has several submissives, both online uh, and in the real world, because that's just their specialty. They enjoy the banter back and forth. They enjoy getting into almost an argument and being able to really put their foot down and most of the time, that's what the brat is wanting. They're wanting somebody that they can pitch a fit to and that's just going to come over the top of them and just really lay down the law and tell them how it's going to be and punish them. And they want that punishment as well. It's not something that I personally enjoy. Playful banter with the baby girl submissive is about as far as I care to go with that. The pet, and there's two versions of a pet. There are those who truly want to be treated as a cat or a dog. And I'm not talking about a furry, but there are those who want to have to sleep in a pet cage, in a kennel, and they have their little pet toys that they play with, and they eat out of dishes, and there's different levels of those. Some want to be treated like the bad dog that only gets the scraps, and others want their special food. And it's all part of negotiation as to which way that goes. And then there's the pet that is more of the princess baby girl that does like literally to be petted on as you would a cat or a dog or walked around on a leash. And if you're, you know, 24-7 in the lifestyle, 
even in public, taken around on a 